How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you around my quiver for 2021. Um, I've had a few people ask me on various platforms so I thought I'd just um, tell all of you guys in one video to make it a bit easier. I think I'll start with my weight and size. So I'm about, I'm roughly between about 68 and 70 kilos depending on how much I eat or whatnot. And I'm probably about 5'9 to 5'10, I'm not actually too sure, but you get the kind of rough idea. So that pretty much means that I have, um, well I have a two board quiver, which sort of means I can, with these, basically with these two boards I can go out in all different kind of conditions. So my small board, I've got the 68 grip here that you can see. Um, so that's pretty much the same as my sort of um, body weight. Um, so I would recommend if you want to have a small board in your quiver that you always go for something uh, that's similar to your weight. So if you're 80 kilos, you get like an 80 litre board roughly. And then for my bigger board, which this year is the Mamba, uh, the Fanatic Mamba, um, I've got a 78. So as you can see, 10 litres bigger than my body weight. So it's the perfect board for those light wing conditions. So those are my boards. I've got my two boards. And then for the sails, I've got sail sizes from 3.0. Um, right up to 4.7 which you've got here so pretty much this covers me for everything I don't really need anything bigger than a 4.7 that's normally when I'm on 4.7 most sort of larger guys are on 5.3s so really if it's not if it's not enough wind for the 4.7 it's gonna be basically free ride or slalom weather so that pretty much sorts me out um, I've got my 3.4 which is the smallest cell I've got here um, Duotone Superhero for 2021 I have got a 3.0, which is my super small self when it's absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, that's like a little, <laughs> that's, a, that's a slightly older cell just because I don't really use it that much. Um, I Actually, I haven't used it at all this year. The last time I used it was in South Africa. Um, but when it is super windy, um, I always like to have that in the back just, just in case. Okay, so now I'm just gonna look a little bit more detail into each of the boards. So um, let's have a look at my big board. So this year I've gone for the Mamba. Um, it's the new board from Fnatic this year. Last year I was using the Grip, um, but this year I've switched to the Mamba, which is basically the newer version of the Stubby. Um, the Stubby being around for a few years now, obviously with the pretty sort of um, unique shape. Um, this year they've kind of tucked in the nose a bit. It's a little bit more classic. Um, for those people that probably didn't get on with the stubby so much because they, they thought it was a little bit weird I think they will absolutely love this ball. It's got pretty much the same characteristics as the stubby um, But it's in a more sort of classic shape um, For me, this is Probably hands down the best ball I've used in onshore conditions um, When I first sort of tried it at home on the south coast um, It was it was perfect. It was it's, it turns basically a lot looser than the grip um, it, it, you use the back foot a lot more um, and yeah it's it's nice and compact it's like a little skateboard so for like south coast conditions choppy um, small waves this is basically the board I would go for um, and I'm really impressed with um, as for when the conditions get a bit better um, I have used it here when the waves have got a bit bigger a bit cleaner and it's still working really well um, I use it in light wind, so obviously the characteristics of the speed mean I can move around the brake a lot and catch a lot of waves. Um, the only times I've struggled with it is when the waves are getting you know, quite big and powerful and it's, the wind's picking up a bit um, and the board just starts to get a little bit too big for me. Um, and then that is when I move to my grip. So I think I'll go into a little bit of the little tuning tips that I do personally. So with the foot straps, I have um, um, the back strap quite far back um, that just gives me a nice sort of pivot point, pivot point in the turns um, and the front straps I have um, one from the front so coming back one um, right we'll turn it over now so as obviously as a lot of you guys may know I use the K4 fins which I've been using for a few years now and um, yeah I'm loving them um, I've got the scorcher in the back um, which is a 17 um, centimeter um, so I use scorches in all my boards now. Um, it's just a really quick fin, um, a lot of drive, and you can really get a nice sort of big, powerful turn. Um, it doesn't really slide out that much, which is what I like in a board, in a, in a turn. 
Um, as for the side fins, I've got the incinerators, um, which again, I use on all my boards. Um, pretty similar sort of characteristics to the Scorchers. Uh, and I'm using tens um, here in my Mamba. Um, in terms of my UJ position I use for the Mamba, um, pretty much because it's such a short sort of board, um, I like to put it a little bit further back. So I sort of put it probably just touching that square there or even a little bit further in. And that just, again, loosens the board up and makes it really nice and fast. So now we're gonna move on to my second board in my quiver, my small board, um, 68 litre uh, Fnatic Ultra Grip. Obviously this year being the 40th year of Fnatic's, the, the anniversary of Fnatic, um, they've come up with some pretty snazzy designs uh, which come from basically their sort of older, older board designs. So a bit of retro mixed in there, um, but really nicely done, I personally think. Um, yeah, I love the little touches there, like the, the old style logo. I think it looks pretty wicked, stands out on the water. Uh, but yeah, most importantly for me, uh, this board just performs amazingly when the conditions start to get really good, especially when the conditions are, or when the wind really starts to pick up and really starts to blow. Um, so I use this with my sails 3.7 down to 3.0, so my smaller sails. Um, and they just work a treat with this board. Um, I used this a um, few weeks back uh, when we had some easterly winds here, um, when it was super, super windy. And I was just blown away by how much, um, how much control and grip, obviously in the name, this board has. Um, so if you're looking for a board that, um, if you're sailing really strong winds or if you want a storm board, for me, this is the one that you need. Um, and when we get amazing down the line conditions here, this is the board that I kind of go for when it's big, windy and um, really good conditions. The UJ, I pretty much always put it in this position here, um, just a little bit in the box. Um, so actually the rocker of the board's pretty flat, so it's always better for me to put the UJ a little bit further behind so that the board turns a little bit tighter. Um, so that's where I put it always, pretty much. Um, the foot straps, I have the, um, the back one pretty much the same as the Mamba, like almost all the way back. So I've got the last hole here and the second to last hole here. And then uh, these foot straps, I've got them one back from the front. And then turning it over, so you've got the K4 fins again. Um, I've got the scorches in the back and these are two 14s, uh, 14 centimeters. And here I've got uh, the incinerators. Um, actually, I think these are one of the earlier versions, um, but they're pretty similar to the incinerators, but um, yeah, pretty amazing fins. As you can see, the position I've got here is from the last time I was sailing, which was um, Gwythian, pretty windy, really crazy windy actually, and quite big waves. And for me, having them a little bit close together really helped. Um, it basically meant that all the fins were working as one, and that gave me quite a lot of um, control, and that was working really good. So uh, I'd recommend that, as well as always playing, playing with the fins. I'd always recommend playing with the fins because you never know what you can find. Um, but that, that's pretty much the grip. Um, for me, this year, last year I had the 60 litre grip, which was, um, I was growing out of a little bit. Um, and this year, 68 is pretty much perfect for me when it's windy. Obviously, I weigh 68 kilos, roughly. So yeah, those are my two boards. I um, guess we can move on to the sails. Um, pretty similar this year. They haven't changed too much um, with the sails. Uh, but, you know, every year they do a really good job on them. Um, I've actually been really impressed with the 4.7s for this year. Last year, I don't know what it was, but I felt like they felt a little bit heavy when it was, um, when the conditions were a bit lighter, but for this year, I'm, I'm in love with it. When it's super light winds, for me, when I'm using this 4.7 and my 78 Mamba, like, I could go anywhere with it in, in, in sort of slightly worse conditions. It works perfectly together. One thing that's a little bit different with my sails this year that a couple of you might have noticed is basically I haven't gone for the X-ply in the middle. Um, so last year I had the X-ply which is obviously like 
a little bit more like this um, in the middle, in the middle panel, which makes the sail basically stronger, more durable. Uh, but one of the reasons, well, basically the main reason I decided to switch back to just a single monofilm this year uh, was because here I knew I was going to be sailing a little bit more down here in Cornwall where we get more down the line conditions and I feel like when you're sailing down the line you're kind of looking through the sail a lot more and when you have that x bite it's quite hard to see so for me having the this this area more see-through um, it just makes it a lot more easy it just makes it easier to see the wave um, and see where I want to go on the wave um, but yeah so if you are thinking of getting an x by sail and you sail down the line a lot I'd probably recommend you go for this version but um, if you want a bit more strength and durability in your sail and you're sailing more onshore then the x ply is working uh, really really well. So yeah one little thing I missed out on was my boom height um, which some of you might be interested in. So I have quite a low boom I would say. I basically always put, I aim, try and aim this sort of white thing um, to this line here just below medium. So I use that in pretty much all conditions. I don't really change my boom height unless it's really, really light in which I just move it up a little bit. But that's the boom height I like to use. I like it quite low uh, and it just gives me a little bit um, more control um, in the waves. Um, but obviously you can play around with that how you like. Actually, the, probably the best thing I've got new for this year, which I've been really impressed about, is being the, the boom that I've got this year. So. It's the same as, as last year what I had, the Platinum Series, which is obviously full carbon, super nice, super light and responsive. Uh, but I've gone for the sort of slimmer version. Um, so smaller diameter, I think it's 24 uh, millimeters, I think. It's not, it can't be centimeters. It's got 24, yeah. <laughs> centimeters. That would be pretty big, I think. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just a game changer having like a thinner grip on your booms. Um, I've always been a little bit put off by changing the diameter of my boom over the years, but um, I went for it this year and I'm not, I can't look back. I don't think I can ever touch a sort of wider diameter boom. Everything just feels super light. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like I sell better with a smaller boom. So if you've been a bit hesitant about buying one, I would just say 100% go for it for me. Um, yeah, so boom's amazing. For those who are interested, I use 30 inch harness lines. Um, I don't know, have I got long arms? <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. But for me, 30's like pretty much the perfect size. I had 32's a couple seasons ago and they, were, they started feeling a little bit long sometimes. I think lastly, I've got my harness, which is the, the ion sort of duotone. Um, sort of collaboration, team series harness, and yeah, this is the best harness I've I've ever had. Really, um, it's really comfortable, um, and I always not like to wear it like a little bit lower down. Um, just I feel like this is, everything gets a little bit lower and a little bit more controlled. Um, but that's up to you. It's kind of a pretty versatile harness that slalom sailors, wave sailors, uh, freestylers are all using, um, and you can pretty much like wear it how you want, where you want, and it, and it will work. Um, here you go, there's a little top tip. I always carry a little bit of rope in the harness. I haven't really tied it around very well. Um, but yeah, if, it, if you ever get in trouble out there, it's always nice to have a bit of rope. Okay, so there you have it. That's basically my quiver I'm gonna be using um, for this year. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a little bit. I know a few people were curious about it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm using. Um, not a lot of action in this video, I'm sorry, but hopefully in the coming weeks uh, we'll be able to get out more with the coronavirus restrictions lifting. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed it, uh, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you want, if you're really generous, you can go and buy me a coffee. Um, and lastly, thank you to Bede, who's been filming this video <laughs> and filming some other stuff as well. Um, so he's a pretty cool uh, photographer down here at the uni. So if you're down here and you want some pics, um, if you're a surfer, he does some really cool water shots, so go check out his Instagram. I'll put all that stuff down below in the description. Anyway, come to look at the new gear, have you? Yeah. <laughs> to the sky.